line with curve or some quadratic curve or some cubic curve. Okay, so to create a line of scene that you can use the graphics library or the graphics to the library. In the, in the graphics library, you are making both. You are making the rendering, you are making the modeling and the rendering at the same time. For example, we can make G dot draw line and then we can give the points. Okay, so if you want to remember, to make G or G2, for example, dot draw line. So then we can give the first point P1 and the second point P2. So P1 here is X1, for example, Y1, and the P2 has also two points, X2 and Y2. So this is, here we are doing what we are making the modeling and the rendering at the same time. I have seen the previous class how to use the graphics 2D. So in the graphics 2D, so we can create the line and then we can make the rendering of the line. Okay, for example, line 2D, line 2D, for example, L equals new, by 2D dot float or the double. And then we can give the coordinates. Okay, so here we can give the different point. You can give P1 and P2. Okay, so here what we did, we created an instance of flight. If you execute this, you will not you will not see any line. Okay. If you want to draw the line, we can make G2 dot draw, and then we can execute the line that you want to draw. Okay. G2 dot draw. And then here our line L. So here we are making the drawing of the line. So here we are making the line. So if you create a rectangle, for example, rectangle 2D. After creating an instance of a rectangle, you can draw this rectangle or you can use also the field of the rectangle. You can use G2 dot draw. Let's suppose that we created a rectangle R by using the rectangle 2D. Okay. Then you can draw the rectangle, you can also fill the rectangle by the color. Okay, so if you want to set color, you can use G2 dot set color and you can select the color that you need. Any question about this? Okay, I've seen that for the quadratic curve, let's suppose that we need to make a curve like this. So here we have a quadratic curve. So how to create this curve? We need now this point, let's call it P1, and this point, let's call it P2, and we need here what we call the control point. Okay, so this is an example of quadratic so I have to make quad curve 2D, and then you can give the name, which is new, quad curve 2D dot double, and then you can you have to give the different points. You have to give the P1, then the control point, and then the ending points. Okay, so to make this, we have to make it quad quadratic curve 2D. So it's for example, Q equals new. Quadratic uh, to the dot bubble. And then here you have to give the first of all point P1, then you have to use to give the control point one, and then you have to give the point P2 and ending points. Okay. If you want to make, for example, a shape like this. We have seen that we have P1, we have P2, we have here the control point one, and here we have another control point two. So to make a curve like this, so here it is a cubic curve. And to do this, we have to use the cubic curve 2D. The cubic curve 2D, which is, for example, C equals new cubic curve 2D. Double. And then you can give here the point that you need. So here you have to give four points. So P1, then you have to give the control point one, then the control point two, and then finally P2. Okay, any question about this? Once you created an instance of cubic curve, you can draw 
this cubicle we can make g2.grow grow like c or g2.grow sorry g2.grow c or g2.grow q okay we have seen also in the previous class how to create uh, so i have seen the cubicle the quadratic curve okay we've seen the rectangles the ellipse the arc and for the polygon let's suppose that you want to create a polygon like this so the polygon is nothing but a connection between different points. Okay, so here let's call this P1, here are P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, and finally P7. Okay, so here for every point here we have the X and Y. X1, so for example, Y1. For P2, we have X2, Y2. For P3, here we have X3 and Y3, etc. So we have X4 and Y4. Okay, so how to create this polygon? We have to create first of all two vectors or two array. The first array is the array of the X's. So we can make it int. So it is an array of integers. So we can call it X. Or it's array, and then you can give the values. So what are these values? Of to make here the values of x1, x2, x3, x4, etc. So here the values of the different x. You want x1, x2, x3, x4, etc. What to create to be the vector of the y components? So you have to make y1, y2, y3, t, y7. Once we to have that done now you can create your polygon so here polygon you can give any name equals a new polygon and then you have to give the x vector the y vector and here the, the, our x vector will x poly our y vector is y poly and here the length is seven poly can you make x poly dot length or y poly dot length you can select the color that you need g dot set color and then you can draw your polygon. Any question about this? No questions? Do you need example of polygon? Shabra, do you need an example of polygon? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Okay, so let's create the polygon. Okay, let's use the picture. I suppose that we want to create this shape. We have different points. This is our P1, P2. So let's have you, for example, 100 from 100. Here, let's see if it has 200 from 100. Here, let's make it as 400 comma 100. This point here will be 500 comma 100. This point will be 500 comma 200. And here, this point, let's make it as 100 for the X and for the Y, it is 2. For this point here, let's make 200, it is plus 100, so 300. And for the x component, let's make it as a C. So let's suppose that this is that the this is the shape that you want to draw. Okay. So what is the first thing to do here? So I have to create a vector for the x's, and you have to create a vector for the y components. Yes or no? Yes, we have to create an array. Okay, so let's create an array. So let's call this array x, and it is an array of integers, so int x array 
three points, and then we have to give the values. So what is the first value? The first one is the first x. What is the first x? Let's start. Okay, it makes x. 300. 200. So 200, we have to make this for this one, okay? So this is P to P. So uh, 200, then? 300. 300, then? 500. 400. 400, then? 500. 500, then? 500. Again, 500, then? 100. 100. So let's see the first, first vector for the x component. And we have to do the same thing for the y component. So we need it is an array of integers. So x, y, array. And then we have to give the values. So what are the values for the y component now? So the y component uh, is this value, then this value, then this value, this value, and so on. Okay. This one will be 100. Yes. 100. Then, and 100. Then. Zero. Zero. Then. 100. 100. Then. 100. 100. Then. 200. 100. Then, then 200. 200. Okay, so we'll close this vector and we have to make semicolons. So now we created the two vectors x and y. Once we have done with x and y, we can create the polygon. Okay, so we can make polygon. Let's give the name for example t equals new. Polygon. And then here we have to give three parameters. So the first parameter is the text first vector, which is x. The second parameter is the second vector, which is y. And then the third parameter is the number of points. So here how many points do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, and it's seven. So this will create an instance of polygon. Now, how to draw this polygon? G dot draw. So we can make now G or G2. Go below. And then you have to draw what? You have to draw the two. Okay. So around this, you can see that now we have the shape. Okay. So we can use G2 dot field. You can see that now we are filling the area, the interior area of this polygon. Instead of comma seven here, if we don't know the length of the vectors x and y, you can use x dot length, or you can use y dot length. Same thing, find the same result. If you make now the six point, you can see that you are removing the last. Last one. It will be polygon with six points instead of seven. Make it as five points. This is our polygon with five points. So we move the bottom of our ship. So this is for the okay. We have seen that if you have shape, we can uh, use the constructive area. That means we can add the union of key shapes together. So we will add the union. We can make the subtraction. That means one shape minus another shape. So we are subtracting this shape from the original shape. We can have the intersection of the two shapes. And we can have the exclusive or of the two ships. 
And we have seen this example. Any question about this example? OK, now let's see another way to create a pointer. So if you want to, to uh, create any shape, a complex shape, so here we can use the general part. OK, so the graphics to the engine, it then uses five basic types of curved segments for the rendering of the border of any shape. Now we'll see how to create shape by using the general path. So first of all, we have to create an axis of general path, and then we can use the different method of the general path. So what are these methods? We can use the move to. So here for the general path, it's like having the pen. And this is our origin. So move to, that means you are moving your pen to this position, for example. Move to 200, 100. So we are just moving the pen without drawing anything. And then if you want to draw a line, we can use line two. For example, from this point, let's make line two, for example, 200, 200. This will create a line like this, starting from the initial position. Okay, you can use a quad two. We can use the method cubic two. We can use another line, another line, another line like this, another line like this, and you can close the segment. So this will close the initial point with the last point. Okay, so here it's like having a pen, and then from the pen we are moving the pen. So move to, we move the pen without drawing anything. So initially the pen is at the origin. Move to will change where to put your pen. And then if you make line two, if you make a line, so here for the line two, we have to give here just component or uh, the coordinate one point. For example, here line two, for example, 200, comma 200. We are just giving one point. We are not giving the second point. Okay, so let's suppose that we want to go to this, to this point. So we have to give only the coordinate of this point because it will start from this point. OK, so it's not like here uh, the line 2D. In line 2D, you have to give, or G dot zero line, you have to give two points. But here for the line 2, you have to give the coordinate of one point, which is the destination. OK, this is how to use the general part. So these are the methods that we have to use or we can use. So we can use move to. So the move to method here we have to give the float x and float y so it's like moving the pen to the new location x and y without drawing anything now our origin like this initially the pen is here move to we just change the position of the pen without drawing anything. now if you want to draw a line you can use the method line two so line two here and then we have to give the coordinate of one point we have to give x and y and these are the coordinates of the destination point. So I mean, P destination. Okay, so let's suppose that the destination here, the point destination is here, and we use line two. So we start from the last position of the pen and we will create this line. You can also use the method quad two. So the method quad two here is similar to the quad first two D. Okay, but here, what two, we are not giving three points, but we are just giving two points. Why? Because uh, the initial point here is not. The initial point is the last point. Let's suppose that we want to create a curve like this. Okay. So the pen is here. This is our destination point. I will use uh, P2. And here we have a control point somewhere. So if you want to use quad two, so you have to give here the coordinate of the control point, and then you have to give the coordinate of the destination point P2. And don't give the original point, because the original point is the last position of the pen. You have also the method curve two. So the curve two here is similar to the cubic curve two. Cubic, if you remember, in cubic curve, you have to give four points. 
starting point, the first control point, the second control point, and the last control point. But here you have the path. It's like you have the pen here, and you are using the pen. That means you, that means you are continuing the drawing. Okay, so the curve two, the initial point, if we have here the curve two, the initial point is already known, which is the last position of the pen. And then we can make, for example, like this. So we need here a control point, we need here a second control point. Let's call it control point one, control point two, and this start here the point T. Okay, so now for curve two, we have to give the as the parameter here, we have to give the control point one. This point, then we have to give the control point two. And finally, you have to give the destination to the P. And then once you have done, you can close your path. So the closing the path will close the last point, the starting point. This is if you use the close. So these are the five methods that we can use with the general path. Any question about this? Questions. Okay, so let's do the same thing, but by using the general path. Okay, you want to make this path this shape by using the general path. So how can we do this? What is the first thing to do here? We have to create an essence of general path. How to do it? Yeah, let's try to do it together. So here we have to create an instance of general part. How to create an instance of general part? Mm, general part, then it's name. Okay. General, general part. Then it's a for example, G equals new general part. Okay. So here what we need to create is a of general path. And I want to start from the point P1. So I have to move the pointer to the position P1. Which method you have to use from these five methods? So I want to go to the first point. So I have to use move to, and then you have to go to the first point, which is the point with the coordinate 100, 100. So here we have to use move to. So here we are moving what you are moving the general path. So we have to move G dot move to. Okay, and then we have to give the coordinate of the first point. So here we have 100, comma 100. Then I want to make a line between the point that we have here and this point. So which method I have to use? Line two. Line two. Yeah. So here we have to line two. So for the line two, I have to give the coordinate of one point. What is what are the coordinate here? Uh, two hundred, one hundred. Very good. Then we have to continue. G dot. Line two. Yeah, where to go now? This point. Uh, 300 to or and zero. 300 and zero. Again, G dot line two. Now the next point. 500 
and then one hundred. Yeah, very good. Next point. We got line two. Five hundred and one hundred. Again, G dot line two. Five hundred and two hundred. Okay, so now we have the option to close the path or to return to this point 100, 100. So I can make G dot line two 100, 100, or I can just close the path. So how to close the path of to use here? Close. This will close the path. So G dot. You missed uh, 100, 200 points. I missed one point. Yeah, last point. Just okay, so I'll find, sorry, 100 to 100, then 500 to 100, then 100. No. That's it. So G dot. I to. So here the point uh, 100, comma, 200. Now I have to close the path. Go to the G dot close the path. And then I can close the path. Now I have done the path. So we did here the modeling path. So if I run, you can see that we don't have any. Okay, now I have to draw this path. So how to draw this path? Two dot draw. I want to draw what? I want to draw the path G. So this will be on the path. Now you can see we have the same path, but here instead of using polygon, we use it in your general path. So the polygon and general path are very, very important. So we have to understand how they do it. Any question about this? You can also fill the general part. You can select a color, which color you have to use for filling, etc. So now we are filling our So we have another example of general part. So here we want to draw this symbol. So how can we draw this symbol? So we can use the move to. So first of all, we have to create a general part. So general part, part equals in general part. And then we have move to, part dot move to. We have to go to this point, which is minus two F. Zero. When we start with minus two, zero. And then here we have quad two. So quad two, we create this quadratic. Okay. And then we have another quad two. This is another quadratic curve. So how to make this quadratic curve? So here we have to use the control point. And we have the control point one. We have the control point two. Okay, and then we have, once we have done with the two water curve, we can uh, move the pointer or the cursor or the pen to, uh, for example, this position, and then we can continue the rest. So the rest will be just some lines. Okay, so we have here uh, one line, two line, three line, and then we can close the path. So you can see that here we are using just a small little A small shape.
Hernández. You can see that we got small uh, path here, and you cannot see this path. So how to do to see this path? So let's translate now the view and choose. So this is the, the next chapter, okay? This is the chapter what that we'll see today, okay? So before drawing the path, let's click now G2 dot translate. So in this translate here with uh, for example 50 over the X component and 50 over the Y component. So here we are making the human transformation. And this human transformation is the translation. I can see that we have a very small part. Okay, so you can see that you cannot uh, see this part because it is a very small shape. Okay, so in order to be able to see it, you have to make, for example, a zoom, or uh, to make scaling. And this is what we will see in the next class, which I'll allow you how to scale this shape. Okay. Let's take another example. So here we have a car and you want to draw a car like this one. Okay, so we want to draw this car by using a general pattern. So first of all, let's use the pen and let's give the coordinate of the points. So here we have 160,100. So this is the point here, which is 60,100. And then we are, uh, on two, 80, 1, 1. so we will have 80. Okay, 60, 100, so we will have 80, 100. Then we have 8, 100, 100. Here we have the control point here. Let's call it control point one. 90, 140. Here we have another line. Is 160, 100. We have another control point. So for the point of point two, 170, And then on the line here, which is 180, 120. So the last point here is 200, 100. And on this point here, which is 160, comma, So here, Another point which is one one zero from eighty. Another point here which is ninety from hundred. And you have another point here which is sixty from one. So these are the different points that we are doing. So to create this curve, you have to use quadratic curve. So here for the general part, we have to use the quad to create this part and to create also this part. And to create this part, we need the control point. So the control point will be somewhere. Okay. And we have another control point. Now, to create this curve, we need two control points. Okay. So here, this curve is not quadratic. So it is in cubic. Two control point. You can make it as 200 for my 80. And this point has the coordinate 1 by 5, 1. So here you have the control point 3 and control point 4. So these are the two control points that we have to use for this period. OK, so now we can start. So after finishing here the design, after uh, selecting the coordinate for the point, now we can start creating the general path. 
Then you have to give a name, for example, GP equals a new general path. So you are creating in a sense of general path. And then you can start. So I have to move the pen in this position, which is 60, 100. Great. So you will have to move to. And then you have to make the first line here, which is line two. So you have to GP dot line two. And then you have to give the coordinate of this part, which is 80, 100. So we will have the line two, 80, 100. Now, from this point here, you have to make a few big curves. So here you have to use quad two. You have to give the first control point, which is this control point. And then you have to give the destination point. You can see the destination point. So quad two, this is the control point one, and this is the destination point, which is 100, 100. Then you have a line this position, which is 160, 120, of line two. And then you have another quadratic curve. Now this control point, and this is the destination point. So I have to use again quad two, or to give the control point, which is 170, 140, and then you have to give the destination, which is 180, 120. So this to make the to make this line. So here we are just selecting this form, which is to the destination. And then we have line two. And again, we have line two, then we have line two, and then we have close path or line two. Any question about this? I'm going to this. What we did here. Copy graphics to the general path. It means two, nine, two, one, two, nine, two, one, two, 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 two dot, zero, and then we have the zero. Now, run. You can see that now we we'll have our. Is this clear? Any question about this? Options, very good. Okay, we have done with lecture three. Now we have to go to the lecture four and then we'll study the geometry transformation. So, after creating any shape, we can make transformation for this shape. And as we have seen previously, we have two types of transformation. We have the object transformation and we have the viewing transformation. And we'll see how to play both in this chapter. So, what type of transformation we can have? Here we are talking about the object, any object. Okay, so let's suppose that we created an object like this function. Okay, and then for this object, we can rotate this object and make it like this by making a rotation. I can make scale of the object from the first object. I can create a bigger object. I can make a rotation. I can make translation. I have an object and then we have to translate the next or the object to another location. So these are some examples of transformation. Okay, so we are focusing on the affine transform.
If so what are the fine transform that you can use? We can have translation, we can have rotation, we can have scaling, we can have shearing, and you can have also reflection. Reflection means a mirror. For example, let's have a reflection over this slide. So let's suppose that the shape is like this. To make a reflection, the shape will be like this. When you have a reflection, reflection means a mirror. And the shearing here, it's like having the shearing axis. Let's suppose that this is our X and Y. And let's suppose that we have a rectangle and we have here the shearing over this line. Okay, so the shearing here, we change the values. Okay, so we, we measure here, for example, distance. I want to check the new position of this part. I have to check the distance from this point to the line, and then I have to move the same distance to the right. So this point will be here. This point here will be here. And then on the same thing, this point here, I have to make it in this direction, on this distance, so the same distance, it will be here. On this point, it will be here. So the last, if we draw now the new transformer shape, we will find something similar to this one. Okay, so this is what this new sheet. Okay. So the object, objective of this class is to understand the fine transform, to understand the difference between the object transformation and the viewing transformation. And in the last part, you see how to combine basic transformation together to create more complex transform. Okay, so here the geometric objects are making an affine transform. Okay, so the geometric object go through the transformation stage before being rendered. So generally you are making the design. After creating the design, you can make some transformation. And once we are done with the transformation, you can make the render. So before making the transformation. So general family of geometric transform, use it to complete the graphic score. Transform will map the parallel line to the parallel line. And if the affine transform preserve on all also the distances, it is called isometric or equilibrium motion or rigid motion. The transform preserve the distances. For example, having an object and we are making translation of this object. So here we are conserving the distances. So this is called an isometric or Euclidean motion or rigid motion. But some types of uh, fine transform doesn't preserve the distance. For example, the scale. Now here, this is our X and Y component. We have a rectangle like this, and you are making the scaling with a factor of two over the X axis and the factor of five over the Y axis. Okay, that means for this point, it will be the same. For this point, you have to multiply the X component by two, so it will be here. And you have to multiply the Y component by five, so zero times five, it will be the same. Now for this point, you have to multiply the X component by two. So the X component is zero, it will be zero. And so it will be somewhere. Same thing for this point, you have to multiply the X component by two and the Y component by five. So we'll find this one. So the image of the rectangle will be, or the image of the rectangle the square will be this rectangle. So here you can see that you are not concerned with the distances. That means the scaling here is not the nice one. So if your transformation preserve the distance, it is called the price point. It doesn't conserve for the distance of the price point. Okay. Now, the common affine transform that we see in this class will be the translation. After the translation, I have to move one position to another position. I have to make rotation, I have to make reflection, I have to make the scaling, and how to make the shift. So let's start with the first type of transformation. So here we are talking about the translation. So the translation, we have here an object. We are changing the position of this object. So to create transformation, you have to give the transformation coefficient over the x-axis 
and the coefficient of translation of the dot y axis. So in this example, you have we are using translation in the three over the x axis and minus one over the y axis. Okay, every point. You have to take the x of this point and you have to make x plus three. So we have one. One plus three will be four. So one, two, three, four. And for the y, we have to make it minus one. So we have to one plus one. Same thing for this point. Okay, we have to add the three. And do minus one for the y, we find this point. For this point, we have to go three and minus one at this point. And for this one, we have to go three and do minus one at this point. So the image of the rectangle here will be this rectangle. This square will be this square. So to define a transformation like this, so this transformation is called translation transformation. And for every type of transformation, we have what we call the transformation matrix. Because in math, so how to move from one point to another point, you have to multiply the uh, matrix of the point or the matrix of the shape by a transformation matrix. This is called the transformation matrix. So the transformation matrix for the translation. So you can see that it is here three by three uh, matrix. OK, so this is the matrix of the translation. And here we have a translation of A over the X component and B over the Y component. So the trans transformation matrix will be 1, 0, A. So what is A is the translation over the X axis. And then here you have 0, 1, B. B is the translation over the Y axis. And then the last line is 0, 0, 1. So for all the trans that we see today, the last line is always 001. So, uh, if you want to create translation, okay, so you can define that you have translation with the coefficient A and B, you can give just A and B, or you can create a matrix. And in this matrix, we have to give the, the coefficient of the matrix, and these coefficients are 1, 0, 0, 1, 8. Okay. This is for the translation. Any question? Okay, let's see now the second type of translation of, of transformation, which is the rotation. Now, for the rotation here, we have to give two parameters. We have to rotation about which point and by which angle. For example, let's suppose that you have the original form here. And we want to make a, a rotation about this point, which is the origin, with a certain angle, angle, for example, here 45 degree. So if you rotate this triangle or this rectangle or this square, you will find this square. So how can we find this square? We have to make the rotation of all the points. If you rotate this point, it will be here. Okay, you rotate this point, it will be here, etc. So here you have to make the rotation of all the point, and then you connect the point to find the image of your options. Okay, so here we have an example of a rotation over the origin. So the point here is the origin, 0, 0, and the angle here is 45 degree. Now, the transformation matrix of the rotation about the angle theta is this one. So I have cosine theta, minus sine theta, sine theta, cosine theta, zero, zero. And then the last row is zero, zero. So this is called the transformation matrix of the rotation. Now the next type of affine transform, which is the reflection. So here we have the reflection over a line. So here we have, for example, we have this line. I do want to make the reflection of this uh, triangle or this rectangle of any shape, okay? You can use any shape, and then you can make the reflection of this shape over this line, okay? So this line has, uh, for example, this expression. Here you have y equals k multiplied by x. So if you want to make a reflection over this line, and the equation of the line, which is f of x equals k times x, then the transformation matrix will be this matrix. So the transformation matrix of the reflection. 
Now for the reflection, the image of this point will be this point. The image of this point. So how to make the uh, how to find the image? How to measure here the distance from this line to the point? And here we have to use perpendicular angle. Distance we have to do here the same distance. You find this point, and this point you have to make here perpendicular line. You have to measure distance, the distance, and then you have to continue, and you have to use the same distance. And for this point, also to be clear. And now we have the reflection. If you have shape like this, okay. So the image of this point will be here. The image of this point will be here. The image of this point will be here, and this is the image. Any question about this? This is for the reflection. We have seen the translation, we have seen the rotation, we have seen the reflection. Now we see the scaling. Sorry. Yes, go ahead. So here they can ask you to write the code to make reflection over this line. Okay. You have to write the program. So we see, so generally you are not using the matrix. Okay, so if they ask you to use the matrix, generally they are giving the different parameters or the different elements of the matrix. And we see two, two ways of creating the transformation. Okay, so we see the first way by just indicating that you have a reflection or you have transformation of translation or have a rotation, and then we have to give the parameters of this transform. The second way is to create the matrix and we see how to create the matrix. We will see the both techniques, okay? Now, the second or the next type of a fine transform is the scaling. For the scaling, we have two factors. We have a scaling over the X axis and we have a scaling factor over the Y axis. For example, we have this rectangle. And if you make here a scaling by a factor of 1.5,2, that means here over the x axis, you have a scaling of 1.5. That means if you can take, for example, this point, the coordinate of this point is 1,1, the x of this point is 1, the image of this point for the x, it will be 1 times 1.5. It will be 1.5. And what about the y component of the point? So here we have a scaling of 2. So it is 1 here, 1 multiplied by 2, it will be 2. So the image of this point 1, 1 will be the point 1.5 comma 2, which is this point. And we have to do the same thing for all the points. So this point has to coordinate 2 comma 1. Okay, so the image here will be 2 times 1.5, which is 3, and then uh, one, one times two, which is two. So we have this point, etc. For this point, what do you have? We have one comma two. You have to multiply the one by 1.5. So it will be 1.5. And you have to multiply the two by two. So it will be four. Of the point two four. And for this point, you have 2, 2. We have to multiply this 2 by 1.5, it will be 3. And we have to multiply this 2 by 2, it will be 4. So the coordinate will be 3, 4. So now I'm just to connect the different point together, we will find the image of this rectangle. Is it clear how to make the scaling? For the scaling, we have to give the scaling coefficient over the x axis and the scaling coefficient over the y axis. So we can call them as alpha and beta. And once we have alpha and beta, we can create the matrix or the transformation matrix. So here we have to make alpha here, beta here, the rest are zeros. And as I explained, the last row is always zero, zero, one. This is the transformation matrix on the scale. Now, we have uh, the sheet. Uh, please mute your mic. Please mute your mic. Okay, so here we have an example of shearing. So the shearing here, we have the shearing about a line. Okay, so we can have, for example, this shape. 
and you want to make sharing over this line, sharing about this line. So as I explained to you, so the point that are the intersection between the line and the shape, they will, they will not change, okay? Now this point, for example, at this distance from the point to the line, we have to make the same distance here backwards. So the image of this point will be clear. The image of this point, same thing. We measure this distance and make it to the left, so we have this point. Now for this point, we have to measure the distance and make it to the right to have this point. And for this point, we have to measure the distance and make the same distance to the right of this point. So initially, what do we have? So finally, what do we have? We have this line, we have this line, we have this line, and we have this line. So this is called shading over the line. Okay, so here in Java, we have the shading. For the shading, we have to give the shading factor over the x-axis and the shading factor over the y-axis. Okay, so here as an example, here we have the transformation matrix of the shading along the x-axis by a factor of s. So you have the identity here, matrix, and then here you have the sharing factor over the x component, which is the s. Okay, so Java 2D uses the affine transform class to define an affine transform. Okay, so it offers convenient methods. So here we see the different method that we can use to make basic affine transform. So the method can be set to identity. So identity means the same. So if you have anything, if you have a matrix X multiplied by the identity matrix, you will find the same X. So set to identity, that means we will not perform any transformation. Then uh, if you need to use rotation, so you can, you can use void set to rotation. So what does this mean set rota to rotation? So here you are uh, informing java that you are using here a rotation so how can i uh, do it so i have two possibilities we can use set to rotation or we can use just rotation so it depends on what type of transformation we want to make it is it object transformation or it is viewing transformation then here we have to give the parameter which is the theta and you have that and the second technique is to give the matrix and you see also how to make, give the matrix OK, so now if we want to set the transformation as a rotation, we can use here set to rotation. If you want to make uh, a rotation uh, over uh, point P and with an angle of theta, in that case, you have to give theta and you have to give the coordinate of the point P. So here you have to set to rotation. So first of all, we can create an instance of fine transform. You can use a fine transform, for example, T equals the new of fine transform. And then what are, the, what are the parameters of this transform here? We can do it by using set to rotation or set to scale if you want to make scale. And then we have to give the scale factor over the X axis and the scale factor over the Y axis. We can use set to shear. And then we have to give the shearing factor over the X axis and the shearing factor over the Y axis. We can use set to translation to give the translation uh, parameter or coefficient over the x axis and the translation coefficient over the y axis. So this is the first way. Okay, we can also use a matrix. We have a matrix, whatever the matrix is. For example, I have a matrix here, we have three, here we have two, here we have zero, here we have one, minus two, three, and the last row is zero, is one. OK, and you need to make transformation by using this matrix. So how to do this? So we can create from the beginning a fine transform. Like this. OK, and then we can give the different parameters. So we have here, we have to give the first element here, which is M00. So the first parameter here is for the row, and the second parameter is for the column. So what is M00 in this matrix? Three. Three. Very good. So here we can use create. We can make a fine transform T equals new a fine transform. And then with open parentheses, the first value here is three. Then M10, what is M10 in this matrix? One zero means row number one. 
number one, column number zero is one. So I can make it one. Then we have M01. What is M01? Row zero, column one, which is two. Two, we have to move into two. Then M11, which is minus two. Minus two, then M2, M02. Uh, zero. Zero. And finally, M12. Which is three. So you can see that here we didn't uh, give the value of this zero, this zero, and one because always the last row is zero, three, one. Okay, so this is how to define and find transform by giving its um, transformation matrix. Okay, or we can create an empty find transform and then we can set this matrix to the find transform. We can create, for example, a find transform. For example, let's call it T equal to new phi spot. So the first method is to give here the parameters of the matrix, or you can make it like this, and then you can give now the value of this matrix by using the set point transform. So you can make T dot set transform, and then you can give the values of the matrix of these values. values. We have two techniques to do this. So we can give the matrix and the definition of the fine transform here, or we can create a new fine transform like this. And then to uh, construct the matrix, we can use here the set transform method. We can use here T dot set transform, and then you can give the different parameters. We then want to give six values. Okay, so we have to give this value from this matrix. We have to give this element, then this one. Then this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. This is M00. Here we have M01. Then here we have M10, etc. Or M01, etc. We have one, one, zero. Is this clear? So if you want to make a, a transformation of translation. So you can just here use set to translation and give here the translation over the X axis and the translation over the Y axis and you have that. The second technique is to use uh, the matrix, the translation, the translation matrix. OK, so here we have translation over the X axis with a factor of A and the translation over the y-axis with the factor of B, then the matrix will be like this. Here we have 1, 0, A, and then here we have 0, 1, B, and the last matrix is, or the last row is 0, 0, 1. And then we can give the values like this. So this element, then this one, then this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. Okay? So the easiest way it's just to use here uh, void set to translation. That's it. And then you have to give the value of A, the value of B, and we have that. Okay. Now, if you want to use the translation of scale, for example, you can use here transform dot set to scale. So transform here is the name of your fine transform. So we can use example it is T. So we can use T dot set to scale minus one one. That means you are making a transformation of scale with minus one over the x-axis and one over the y-axis. This is for the definition of the translation. Okay, now, we made the definition of the translation. We know that we have an affine transform and our affine transform, for example, is escape. Now we can, we can apply this uh, affine transform to the object, and it is called object transformation. Or we can apply this transformation to the whole viewing. And it's called viewing transformation. Now, how to apply the transformation to the object itself? We have to use here create transformed shape. We have to use the method create transformed shape. For example, here our shape is a circle C. 
Okay, so we can make, for example, the shape C1 equals create transform shape of the shape C. And then shape C will be the origin shape, and C, C1 also will be the transforming shape. So this is called object transformation. Or you can use here the void transform. So the transform here will transform the whole uh, viewing system. So this one. So let's see here some examples of using both. So this example here, have object transformation. So what do we have here? We have a rectangle. We have rectangle 2D, red equals new, rectangle 2D dot double. You have the coordinate of the origin, which is 20, 20. And then here you have 100 as a width, and you have 100 as height. Okay, so this is our original rectangle. And then we are defining an affine transform. So here you have to create an essence of a fine transform. So a fine transform, then you have to give a name transform. And you have to indicate what type of transformation you have. In this example, we want to make transformation of translation. And in 120 over the y-axis. So here I have to do this, we have to give tx dot set to translation, and then we can give the parameters of A and B. This is A and this is B. So A is for the X component and B is for the Y component. So here what we did, the definition of the transform, but we didn't apply the transform it. Okay, now let's draw the rectangle. So this will draw the first rectangle because we didn't apply the transformation yet. Now let's apply transformation for the object rectangle. Now you want to use the shape, and then you can give any name here, for example, R equals. Now, what are we doing for this R? We are transforming this R by using what? By using here the uh, transformation TX. So here we have to make TX dot create transform shape, and then we have to give here the input parameter, which is the rectangle. So what do we have now? Now we have two shapes. We have the shape rect, which is this rectangle. And you have another shape, which is named shape. And the shape is the transformer rectangle, which is this rectangle. Now, we draw the first rectangle here. Now, after draw the second rectangle, we'll do the same technique, G, the draw shape. So this will draw the next or the modified or the transformed object. Any question about this? Yes, go ahead, please. We yeah, call a fine transformation. We call a fine transformation to x equals only a fine transformation. Hello, sorry. We are using a fine transformation. And then you have to indicate what, what type of fine transformation you are doing. It can be translation, it can be shearing, it can be rotation, it can be any type of translation, any type of transformation. Okay. Now, G2 dot, G2 dot rotate, it is a viewing transformation. It's not an object transformation. So it depends on the question. So here we are studying the object transformation, how to make the object transformation. You have to apply by using the method create transform shape. So we have to use the name of the transformation dot Create transform shape. So here you have the object transformation. Which object you are transforming? We are transforming the object rect. What is rect? Here rect is a rectangle. We can apply this transformation for rectangle, for a circle, for an oval, for a shape, for a polygon, for any any type of shape or general path. Okay, so we can apply this transformation for every shape. And it is object transformation. If you make G2 dot translate, so it's something else. G2 dot translate, you are translating the viewing point. So it is viewing transformation. Okay. 
and not object transformation. We'll see this in the next slide, inshallah. Okay. Did you get the point? Okay. Okay, so this is our skeleton. So let's run this and check what we have, okay? Now, let's have, uh, let's create a new affine transform. So affine transform Tx equals new affine transform. And our transformation here is translation with 120 over the X component and 120 over the Y component. Okay, let's remove this. We don't need this rectangle. Okay, we don't need this drawing this rectangle and this apply this uh, transformation. So let's use now, let's create another shape. Let's call it S equals TX dot set transform shape. Now I want to, uh, to transform the shape GP, see the general path. I want to transform it to GP. Now the transform shape will be S and the original shape will be GP. So here we are drawing the shape. And now we have to draw here the transform shape. The transform shape here is S. Is this example clear? So what can we can we see here? We we'll see the original shape, and we we'll see the transformed shape. So you can see that you have the original shape here, and you have here the transformed shape. Is this clear? So let's make a transformation with 100 over the X axis and 400 over the Y axis. Okay, so we can use, for example, zero over the Y axis and let's make it 200. 120 over the x axis. If I need another car here at this location, what do I have to do? Okay. You have to transform the last shape. The last shape is S. I have to transform S by using the same transform. So no need to create another transform. But I can create another shape. Okay, so I can create now another shape, S2, for example. Now the shape S2 equals Tx dot create transform shape of what? Of S. So S2 will be an, an image of S by using the same affine transform, which is the Tx. Tx. So the, the name here is Tx. And then I have to draw S2. Now you can see that you have three cards. Excellent. Okay. Any question? So we created one affine transform and we applied this affine transform twice. The first time. So here it is called object transformation. So we, we transformed what? The object GP. And we created an image which is a shape and we saved this shape to the variable S. And here we are drawing S. And then well, we did the same thing. We transformed the shape at S to the shape at S2. So the image is S2. And here we are drawing S2. Any question? Okay, complex. We have an example of object transformation of rectangle. So here what do we have? So here we have another example. Here we have the rotation. Okay, so same thing here. We have a fine transform Tx equals new fine transform. And then what is this transform? It is rotation. So our transform here is set dot or set to rotation. And for the rotation, we have two options. We can use here a rotation and the angle theta, or we can make a rotation and then we can give the angle theta and the rotation point is called P. So if you have one parameter, it is theta. 
and you have a constructor with two parameters. The first parameter is theta and the second parameter is the point. So here we are making a rotation. Now, okay, so the rotation that we will apply is pi over six. So math dot pi over six. And then we are creating a shape here, which is a rectangle, which is this one. Now we have G2 dot translate. So here G, this, this G2 dot translate is not uh, an object transformation. Here we have a viewing transformation. So this transformation here is viewing transformation. So we didn't apply this translate here to the object, but here we apply this translate to G2. So here, or here, if you have uh, many shapes, you have one shape here, another shape here, another shape here. So if you make translate, so it's like you are translating all the shapes. Okay. So here, if you are, if you have translate 50 over the x axis and 50 over the y axis, it's like changing the origin point. Instead of having this origin point, now the origin point will be here. And then you are drawing all the different components starting from this origin point. So it's like having a new origin point here. That's why all the things that you are drawing after this line will be translated. So here we have viewing transformation. Is it clear what is the difference between viewing transformation and object transformation? So here, okay, so here we are translating the view. So it's like changing the origin points. The origin now is here. So the component 50 and 50. Now we are drawing the rectangle. So we are drawing the rectangle with respect to the second origin. It's like here, the second origin is here, and then we are drawing the rectangle, okay? Then we are applying the, here, we have the object transformation. So here we are making an object transformation of what? Of the object rectangle. By using what? By using the translation of the transformation Tx. So here we are applying Tx to the object, which is a rectangle. And then we are saving the image in the variable shape. And then here we are drawing the shape. So what we did here, first of all, we changed the origin. The origin, the origin is no longer here, so it is somewhere uh, here, for example. So here we are 50, and here we are 50. And then we are, are drawing it. So the first rectangle will be 20, 20, not starting from this point, but starting from this point. Here we have 20, and here we have 20. Now we have this point. And then we have 100, 100. This is 100. Okay. And now, now we are making the transformation here. The transformation is the rotation of angle of pi over six. So here it is a rotation over which point? Over the origin. Because here we are using just here one parameter, which is the theta. So if you, if you have here just one parameter, which is the theta, that means it is a translation or a rotation over the origin. Which origin? The new origin that you have here. So this is the new origin. So we are making transformation of this rectangle with an angle of pi over six over this point. So this point will be here. This point will be here. This point will be here. This point will be making a rotation. And then the object will be this point. So here, what we did, we have this new origin point. And you are making here the rotation of pi. Over six. We can do the same thing without using this. Let's see how to do it. Okay, first of all, let's uh, check this. So here we have set to rotation. Now, instead of set to translation, we have set to rotation. So, dot set to rotation. We don't need this rectangle. 
and okay, G2 dot translate. Now instead of drawing the rectangle, now we don't have the rectangle scale of the GP. Another part. And now let's apply the transformation for general part. And let's name it JS shape. And let's now draw. So what do you have need? You start with the general path, you create with the general path. This is power general path. And then we define it and find transform Px. And this find transform is nothing but rotation over the origin with an angle of pi over six. And then you are making the viewing transformation, which is translation of the viewing with 50 over the x axis and 50 over the y axis. Then you are drawing GP. Then you are applying a transformation, an object transformation of GP by the TX. And TX is a rotation of y over x. And then you are doing the new shape S. What's the problem here? Okay, so now we have the original shape. Okay, and then we have the new shape, the transform of the new shape. You have any question about this? Now, translation and origin. So the new origin now is not zero, it's not 50 50, but it is. Is the, the origin now is not zero zero, but it is fifty comma fifty. And translation Sarah to not the head. Okay. The not the Hamsi Hamsi. And it's like having the rotation instead of having the rotation over this point. Now we move the rotation over this point. And this point we move here by over six, we'll find this point. For this point, you will find this point. Let's see, okay. For this point, you will find this point. So you have an angle of pi of six. Starting from this point. Okay. So we can do it for the rectangle. You can see it clearly. So let's see it the rectangle. Okay, we created a rectangle, correct? Okay, and here we are making viewing transformation, which is translate. Then we are drawing this drawing of the rectangle. Rectangle didn't start from 2020. We started here from 2020 plus 50, 50. And the origin now is here. What do you have? The, uh, our origin after making translation of 5050, our new origin is here. And from here, we are creating a rectangle. So the coordinate of this point is 20, 20. So this is the first point. And then we have 100, and then we have 100. Okay. Now, let's continue. Now let's make here a transformation of this rectangle by using the Tx, and Tx is nothing but the rotation of pi over x. And now let's draw the S cell. So you can see that now our S here in this, Rotation, 
So the, the axis of the rotation is not this point, but it is the new origin, which is this point. And this point will move to here. And from here to here. From here to here. It's simple. Here you have our pi over six. This point will move to this point. So here from here to here you have our pi over six. It's simple. So in our new point is this point. This is our new origin, which is 15. Is it clear? Doctor, when did we do the rotation on the same point in the beginning? I mean, we're on the first point of the spheroid. I'm speaking. So, if you want to make the rotation over zero zero, we can remove this. Okay. So now we can check. You can see that we have the rotation. It rested to the origin point. So now we are drawing the rectangle correctly at the position 2020. So if the position is 2020, and then we have a making rotation with respect to this point. This is the origin. Okay, so to rotate this point, we have to make a line like this. We have to make pi over six here. You take the same distance, you will find this point. This is the pi over six. That's it. Now, I have a question. Can we do the same result as previously without making this translate of 50-50? So here for the rotation, we can give the origin of the translation or the origin of the rotation. I can add here the point 50, 50 since I need here a rotation of the point 50-50. But if we draw this, we start from 20, 20 here. But in the previous example, we start from 70, 70. So if we run this, you see that we don't have the same shape. Why? Because here we start from 20, 20. So if you want to correct this, we can add here this 50 to the 20, it will be 70. And we can add this 50 to the 70, to this 20, we will find 70. Now if we run, You can see that we have the same result as previously without making this viewing transformation. So we included this rotation point and we added these values, these translation value to the coordinate of the point that we have. This clear? Yeah. الرسم مكتوب مثلاً أبي يسوي لي عشر مربعات أي سطر بالضبط أحطه في اللوب؟ عشرة you can use the loop and you can apply the transformation ten times. بس إيش اللي إيش اللي إيش السطر من الأسطر اللي موجودة اللي أحطه في اللوب راح يرسم لي العشر متر مربعات. You have to apply here the shape. You are. You have to use here two shape, the original shape and the new shape, and you are drawing here the new shape, and then the original shape would be the new shape of the previous loop. You have three lines to repeat ten times. That's it. Okay. For example, shape S two equals T X transform shape of S. And then you have to draw. And then our uh, shape S will be S2. And then you can start again. Okay, so we have done. So for the rotation, for set to rotate, we can uh, we have two constructors. The first constructor we have to give us the angle theta. In the second construct, we have to, we can give theta and we can give the center of the rotation. This is clear. Please mute your mic. Okay, let's continue. So I'm seeing the rotation. Now, now let's see an example of scaling. So for the scaling, we want to do two factors also of scaling of the x components. 
the scaling over the y plus one. So we have same thing, you find plus one kx equals zero point plus one. And then we have kx dot set to scale. Then we have here a factor of two over the x axis and the factor of five over the y axis. That means if you have any point, for example, this point here with 20, 20. What is the image of this point? You have to multiply the x component by two, be 40. So 20. 20 will be so here for the 20, it will be 40 because you are multiplying 20 by 2. And you have to multiply the second 20 by 5. So here, what you 20 multiplied by 5 will find 1. So the origin of this point 2020 is this point which is 40, 100. So here we have 40, and here we have 100. So the same level. For this one, so what will be the, this one? F of here we have for the x axis we have 120 and for the y we have 20. So what is the image of 120? 120 will be multiplied by 2, 140. And for this 20, it will be multiplied by 5, yani 100. So the image of this point is this point. Then the image of this point will be this point, and the image of this point will be this point. And then you can join the different points together. We can find the image of the rectangle or the image of the square. Any question about this? Now we have the general part, the GP, the OV, the GP, and then we have the transform, the fine transform, and you are using the scale of two over the x axis, and let's use it two over the y axis. We don't need this rectangle. Now we have we have to apply this transformation of GP. We want to make an object transformation of GP, and then you are saving the transformation in the object shape, and then you are drawing the shape. So now we can see that you have our car. Problem is moving. Now we can see that you have the original car, and the second car here is the image of the original car by using the factor scale of what? So we use it two over the x axis and three over the Y axis. If we make it longer cut, we can make, for example, here four over the x axis or three over the x axis and two over the y axis. You can see that here we have the longer. Is clear? Perfect. Let's continue. So here we have the shading. So here we have the shading over the x axis. So this is the x axis from the shading over the x axis with a factor of one, and the shading over the y axis with a factor of two. That means we have a shape. Now, how to find the image of this point? We have to measure the distance from the x equals zero from the x axis. This distance will be to the right to have this image. And for this point, we have to measure the distance here. We make it here. This is the image. For this point, we have to measure this distance and make it to the right of this point. And here, same thing, we have to measure this distance and make it to the right of this point. So the image will be this shape. This is an example of shading of one over the x axis and zero over the y axis. Any question about this program? Is it clear? This line. Mm -hmm. 
and you can see the image of the sharing. This is the image of the shape. But you make, for example, one over the X axis, one over the Y axis, you will see something overlap because you put the shading over the X axis is the same as the shading over the Y axis, the image will be there. If you make here one comma two, you will see something else. And you have the shading being one over the X axis and two over the Y axis. Okay, so now we have seen how to uh, use the transformation. We have seen many types of transformation. Now let's see, sometimes we need to combine some transformations together. To make it more complex transformation, you can combine transformation. Okay, okay. and here if you make, or if you have two transformations. So here, the transformation one, excuse me, pen. If you make transformation one, T1 is use T1 of an object P. And then you are applying now another transformation T2 of T1 of P. So T2 of T1 of P is not the same as we make T2 of P and then we make a transformation one of T2 of P. And if you have a transformation of rotation and the translation, if you make rotation of the translation, you will not find the same thing as the translation of the rotation. So it's not permitted. Okay. And in terms of matrix, how to find the matrix of uh, your composition of transformation? Let's suppose that you have three transformations and you want to make the three transformations together. So in terms of matrix, you have to make the matrix of the transformation one multiplied by the matrix of the transformation two multiplied by the matrix of the transformation. Three. And then you can apply the new matrix here. This is the new matrix of the transformation for the object P. So this will give us the transformation T1 of T2 of T3 of P. So here we made three transformations. Okay, let's see here. And we have seen already an example. Okay, for example, I want to make a rotation about the point three by an angle of 30 degrees. So here we have the origin. I need the rotation over the, the, the point, for example, three, four. This is four, and this is three, four, with an angle of 30 degrees. We have seen the previous example. If you use here set to rotate, if you use set to rotate or to rotation, we can give here the angle theta, for example, 30 or pi over six multiple pi over six, I will just write pi over six, okay? And then I can give the value three, four. But if you do this, you will not get the same result. You have seen that for uh, making the, the drawing of the rectangle, we had to add here the three and the four to the coordinate of this point. So one way to prevent doing this is to make here viewing transformation of new translation. Now we can make a translation, first of all. Okay, then we apply the rotation and then we can make translation back. Okay, so to return back to the origin state. Okay, for example, how to make a rotation about the point 34 by an angle of 30 degree. So first of all, we can make a translation to move the point 34. And then we can make a rotation of 30 degree about the origin, and now the new origin is this origin. And now we have to return back the origin to the previous point. So we can translate back the origin to the point before, sorry, to the point zero, zero. So you have to apply uh, translation with parameters minus three and minus four to return back to the origin point. So here, what are we doing? We are combining three transformations together. We are making one translation, then one rotation, and one translation back. So in terms of matrix, so here you can see the matrix of the translation with the parameters three and four. Then we have the matrix of the rotation. And then here we have the matrix of translation with the parameter minus three, minus four. 
So if you multiply this matrix by this matrix by this matrix, you will find another matrix. So this is the new matrix of the Foxconn chip. Yeah, we as a programmer, we can just call the method, but in math, if you want to calculate the coordinate of every point, you can just use this matrix multiplied by the coordinate of the point. You can find the image of the point. Okay. Now, if you want to support the composite transform, you can use here the rotate, or the rotate, for example, uh, CX dot rotate. We can use this case. So for the rotate, same thing for two constructors. First constructor by using only the angle theta, the second constructor by using the theta and the point of the rotation. We can use the scale method, and then have to give scale over the x axis and the scale over the y axis. We can use the shear, we can use also the things. So if you want to make a composite transformation, you cannot use set two because the set two will take only the, the last, last set two. For example, we use it set to translate, then use set two and rotate, set to rotation. So here you will use Java will use the last set two. But if you use rotate and translate and rotate, then shear. So here we are making composition of many transformation today. This clip. So here, very important, unlike the set two method, these methods don't clear the existing transform in the current object. Okay, but they combine the current transform with the newly specified transform. So we can also, if you want to concatenate uh, to find transform, then we can use the concatenate of the fine transform. So this will concatenate the transform from the left to the right. If you need to make the concatenation not from the left to the right, but from the right to the left, in that case, we can use pre concatenate. So concatenate, that means you are using, you are mixing or combining two transforms, or are adding one transform to the Next, and then here we have an example. Okay, so here we have G2 the translate. So here we have we are making here viewing translate, viewing transform. Here we are making translation of the whole. They are creating an ellipse. Now we are selecting a color. So here we have we have seen that for the color we can give that we can uh, give the color red, green, blue, or we can create a color by ourselves. So how can I create a color? So we can create a color by giving here like uh, red, green, and blue So here, this 160 here is for the red. 160 here is for the green. And 160 is for the blue. And generally, if the blue, the red equals to the green equals to the blue, this will give us a gray. Okay, so if you increase the value of the red, so it will be gray, but here you have the red component, etc. So generally here, if we need, for example, pure red, we can make 255 for the red, zero for the green, zero for the blue. This will create the pure red. Okay, so we created an ellipse. Our shape here is an ellipse. The uh, corner, the upper left corner is 300, 200, and you have the width of 200 and the height of 100. And you are filling this ellipse. Okay, so, so this is the first part. Then we are creating an affine transform. So here, affine transform. Now the name of the transform is transform. It comes in affine transform. Then transform dot translate. 
minus 400 minus 250. So this transform here is translation with here uh, minus 400 over the x-axis and minus 250 over the y-axis. And now we are applying this transform for what? For the shape E. So we apply this transformation to the shape E. Then we are creating a new color. Same thing here, the red equals to the green equals to the blue. So it is uh, another value of gray. Okay, but it is lighter or darker gray. Darker. So here for the colors. Okay, we can give a value from 0 to 255 because you have 8 bit color. So this 0 means you have the black. 255, then you have the and if you have something that is, for example, so this is if you are talking about one color. Okay, so if you are talking about grayscale image, in grayscale image, there is no color, we can give a value between zero and 255. Zero is the pure black, 255 is the white. Now, if you have the RGB or the R, also we can give a value from zero to 255. So zero, yani, there is no red. 255, any maximum of red. For the green, same thing, we have from 0 to 255. From the blue, we have also from 0 to 255. Now, if you give here a color of 0, 0, 0, it will be here the black. Because we have 0 red, 0 green, 0 blue. So it, will, it is black. If you make a color of 255, 255, 255, what will be the color here? White. White. If we give three values that are equals, we have a gray. Gray means we have a value from zero till two point five. Yani the gray that you have here, why I'm I'm saying that it is gray because you have here the three components they are the same. So if the three components they are the same, so it will be a gray. So this gray it is lighter than this gray or darker. Lighter. Light. is lighted because he is near to the white. So let's return back. So here we created the transform. So here you can see that we didn't use set to translate. We use it here translate. Why? To be able to combine many transformations together. Okay. Now here we uh, apply this transformation to the shape E, and then we are uh, setting a new color, which is lighter, and then we are filling the new shape. And then we are, uh, so we can check the first part. So this is the original image. And then we make a transformation of how much. So here is the transformation of minus 400 over the x axis and minus 220 over the y axis. So here we have the original image. And then the transformation of the original image. Any question about this? No questions. Okay, let's continue now. Let's select the color black. So how can we create the black by using the same technique that we have here? So we can use instead of black, we can use a new color of one. Very good. So we can zero. Comma zero, comma zero. So this will give us the black. See. Then we have we are drawing a new line from the origin in this point, and then we are drawing another line from the origin to this point, and then here we have transform dot set to rotation. So here we are using here set to rotation. So this set to rotation here will be uh, with an angle of 5 over 6. And then we, have, we are applying this transformation to what? 
to the shape E. What is the shape E? So this is the shape E which is, uh, we are transforming here, the same shape E which is the ellipse. So we start with the E ellipse, then this E will be the transformed ellipse, and then this E will be again the transformed ellipse. Okay. Now I'm changing the color to another gray, and then we are drawing the E. Same thing here, we are making the transformation of translation with 400, 250. So you can see that this translation here is the opposite of this one. So here we use the translation of minus 400, minus 250. And then here we have to return back to the origin. So we have to make the transformation back 400 over the x-axis and 250 over the y-axis. And we will have to apply this transformation to the ellipse. So you can see that we started from from here. Okay, and here uh, this one is nothing but the rotation of this ellipse, and then here I do want the rotation of this. And using the black here for uh, drawing the ellipses. So here we are using draw and draw. And here we are using fill and fill. Is it clear? So here, first of all, we create an ellipse. Then we apply it a transform of minus 400, minus 200. 20 and we create the second ellipse and we fill it this ellipse and then we use it here the black to draw two lines and then we made the transformation of pi over six and then we uh, what we did here we apply this transformation to the shape e and what is the shape e the shape e is the last shape yeah and if we start it then i will explain it's starting from this we made the translation of this shape. And now I want to combine. Now, uh, I have to apply a rotation on the transformer shape. So the transformer shape is this one. Now I have to apply a rotation to this shape. That's why here we use it set to transform, and then we use it the, then the draw of the ellipse. Okay, and then we made another translation, but we turn back here and then we made a rotation again. This shape, and then we are drawing the signature. Is clear? Any question about this? Okay, so this is the last slide you have done for this class. Now I see inshallah in the next class.